you very much. So I'm going to share with you my personal story and it's up to you to draw the relevance for you from this story and it'll be different things with different people. Some of it might feel quite quite personal, for some of, some of you it might feel professional but there'll be something there for everybody hopefully. And I'm going to start my story from the point of being a 17 year old. As a 17 year old I was diagnosed with something called an osteosarcoma, type of bone cancer, had it in a small bone in my foot and it meant that I had to have six months of chemotherapy when I had my left leg amputated below the knee. Good that, wasn't it? The front row liked it. I appreciate at the back, you know, maybe it didn't work. So, so who here would find that demotivating? Most people, right, okay. So what I want to do is I want to share with you why for me it became the most motivating thing that ever happened to me. And I want to give you some insights that I've picked up on the, along my journey about taking personal responsibility, about teamwork, about, and about what being the best you can be means for me. Now, I need to say right at the very beginning, there is clearly never a good time to get diagnosed with cancer. I'm sure you've all known people who've had it. Terrible thing to have at any age. And I felt particularly hard done by to get it as a 17-year-old. You know, just my friends were learning to drive. I was getting driven to hospital. And it felt really unfair. But I had this moment of inspiration when I first got diagnosed where I suddenly thought to myself, I don't know if I've got six months to live, six years to live, or 60 years left to live. But what I do know is I want to make the most of my time. From now on, I want to try and be as good as I can be or whatever it is that I choose to do. And one of the things I wanted to try and be as good as I could be at was swimming. Now, I, 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 I was a, a lazy county swimmer at the time. I was one of these really annoying kids who thought they were fantastic or whatever they did. But when it came to training, I would just turn up and I would talk to my mates. You know the kind of people. I'm not looking at you guys in particular, but you know, you know the kind of people. And, uh, and I was never going to be better than this county standard swimmer. But when I got diagnosed, I said to my dad, I'd like to, I said, I'd like to see how good I can be at swimming now. Do you think there are some competitions out there for people with disabilities? Because we didn't know anything about this world. It was a new thing for us. And he said, he said, I will find out for you. And he got onto the telephone and he entered me into the Disabled Swimming Nationals before I had my leg amputated. So you can imagine that conversation. Yeah? It went a bit like this. Hello there. I'd like to enter my son into the Disabled Nationals, please. <laughs> Certainly, sir, what's his disability? Hasn't got one yet. <laughs> That is a bit weird, okay, but that, that was my dad's way of showing belief in me. And you know, when you've got difficult times ahead of you, really important you've got people around you showing belief in you. And he helped me through a really tough time. He took me swimming for the first time the day after I had the stitches out of my leg, so about eight days after my operation, still in the middle of all my chemotherapy. And, uh, and he started coaching me. Now within six months, I was swimming quicker with one leg than before when I had two, and I've been a county standard swimmer. And uh, within 18 months, I was good enough, lucky enough to go to the Paralympic Games in Seoul. And when I was there, I won two gold medals, a silver and two bronze medals. And I thought that was a, a pretty big turnaround from being very, very ill to 18 months later, I was representing my country. I was winning medals, which was great. But almost more importantly for me was I was representing my family. It's a huge opportunity for me to give something back to them that helped me through a really, really tough time. Now, something that I think is really important in life is I think it's really important to have a sense of humour. Would you agree? Yeah. And you especially need to have a sense of humour about yourself, don't you? If you can laugh at yourself and smile at yourself, life is a lot easier. Now, I think the Paralympic team can do this better than any other group of people I have ever met. They've all lived with different disabilities, day in, day out, do it with a smile on their face, great group of people. And I'm going to tell you a story that illustrates my sense of humour about myself. And, uh, and all the other guys have got something similar going on. So when I first got diagnosed, I said to the people who made my artificial leg, I said, I'd like to try and go skiing within a year of having my leg amputated. Could you make me an artificial leg that would allow me to do that? They were like, absolutely, we will make you the best skiing leg ever. Like, oh, great, thanks very much. So they started working on this leg, and a few weeks later, they presented it to me. I tried it on. It was pretty comfortable, but it was very, very heavy. But they assured me it was only heavy because it had been reinforced, and that's what made it the best skiing leg ever. Okay. Okay, so I took it away and I went skiing with my brother. Now unfortunately, because it was so heavy, it moved at a very different speed to my real leg. <laughs> and as a consequence, every time I turned to the left, the front of my skis crossed. Every time I turned to the right, the backs of my skis crossed. And eventually I had a big crash into a fence. And uh, my brother skied down to me to see if I was okay. I was more or less okay. I'd winded myself, but I was okay. Then I looked down and I realised I've snapped my artificial foot and it's facing the wrong way around. Now, I thought that was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. Me and, my, me and my brother, we were rolling around in the snow laughing at it. But eventually I gathered myself and I walked down to the bottom of the hill, as you do when you've broken your leg. And I got to the bottom 
There's a guy there looking after the chairlift. And I said, excuse me, can I sit on your chair? He's like, no, absolutely, sit down. And I sat down and I'm holding my leg up like this, but the foot's facing the other way around. <laughs> my brother's got hold of it and I'm saying, snap it back round, snap it back round. <laughs> the people in the queue were green. <laughs> Now, now, I think that's funny, okay? and, and I think if I've learnt one thing from being part of the Paralympic team is that if I can find a little bit of humour in something that's difficult to cope with, it actually goes a long way to helping me deal with that situation. These guys live with different disabilities day in, day out, doing this one on their face.